and welcome to day eight of our 12 day review of sixth grade math. We are two thirds of the way through after we finish this evening. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We are going to be looking at how we can test certain values in equations and inequalities and how we can solve for those equations and inequalities. So this first problem tonight is from the 2017 star test and it is very, very simple. It's number five, and it asks, what value of x makes this equation true? Well, there's two ways we can solve this. First, what we could do is we could simply just plug each of these values into that x. And so let's do that first. Then I'll show you a different way we could solve this problem. So let's just rewrite this. Negative 90 equals negative 100 plus, and I'm going to plug in this a right here, negative 10. So we need to know what happens when you take a negative number and then you plus another negative number. And what those two negative numbers do is they add cumulatively, so it's almost as if you were subtracting it. So really this is saying negative 90 equals, I'm going to go ahead and collapse this right here, to negative 110. The negative 10 and the negative 100 add together to make it negative 110. That is not really what we're looking for. So uh, we're going to say no to that one. Uh, B is going to be negative 90 equals negative 100 plus 10. So what we're doing here is we're looking at uh, a number line here. Let's say this is 0. This is negative 100. So when you add 10, you're actually getting 10 closer to 0 because we're starting at negative 100. So if we get 10 closer to 0, that is going to be negative 90. So that looks like that is going to be it. And then let's just double check to make sure the other ones are way off, which this one is negative 100 plus negative 190. That's going to end up being negative 290. Way too much. And then this final one is going to be D. That is going to be negative 100 plus 190. Well, that's going to get us a little bit closer, but that's actually going to make us go too far. If we start with negative 100 right here, and then we add 190, we're going to jump on the other way, other side of zero. That's going to actually make us have a positive 90. So the answer is going to be B. But I said that there were going to be two different ways that you could solve this. That's one way we can solve this. The other way would simply be to use the properties of operations. So a simpler problem, a simpler way would be to do this. You're going to take negative 9, let's just rewrite the equation, minus 100 plus x. We need to get x on a side of equation by itself. So the only thing that's on the equation on the same side of the x is this negative 100. So the properties of operation says we can use the inverse operation. We could do that to both sides, the equal sign, and we can keep the exact same equation. So we have a negative 100. So the opposite of negative 100 would be a positive 100. And if we add a negative 100 plus positive 100, well, those two would cancel each other out. We would get x by itself. So for that to work, we need to add positive 100 to this side. And you see uh, what we're getting is positive 100 minus 90 or negative 90 plus 100. Either way, it's going to get us this answer of 10. So that's how we could do this first problem. And let's look at number 2 here. So read that, we'll construct a rectangle that has a height of 4 units. So let's just draw a little rectangle here. It's going to have height of 4 and an area of up to 48 square units. So we're going to say it's going to be 48. It's going to be up to 48 square units. So it can equal 48 units and it can be less than 48 units, but it can't be greater than 48 units. So which inequality represents all the possible lengths in units of the basis B that Saritha can use to construct? Well, let's just first make sure we understand how we can find the area of a rectangle. Area of a rectangle, remember, is a very simple uh, equation. And that's just going to be area equals base times height. Well, in this case, we know that our area is going to be 48 or less. And we know that our height is going to be 4. So what we could say here is that our base, if we were to put our area, is going to be 48 or 
less. And actually, I should have that flipped over there. There we go. 48 or less. And I'm going to have a base is unknown, but we know my height is 4. So what we need to do is we need to say, and I did have that right the first time, we need to say the area, the greatest is going to be 48. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this 4 because I want to have this B on the other side. So what we have is the, the greatest it could be is going to be 48. It could be less than that. It could be equal to that, but it cannot be greater than that. And so, once again, properties of operations. We're going to go ahead and take uh, divide 4 on both sides. And we are going to see that those two 4s are going to cancel each other out. So we're going to get 12 is going to be uh, greater than or equal to the base. It can be equal to 12. And it could be less than 12. And we don't necessarily have that, but you see if we have this right here, it's going to be our answer right here, simply flipped. If you flip the B to the other side, you have to flip the inequality to the other side. So that's going to be the same as B is less than or equal to 12. So that is going to be our answer C. And then finally this evening, we are looking at this. Which model shows two equal expressions? These are algebra tiles. When the value of x is 4. Well, let's just start plugging in 4s right here. And what we're doing here is we're just adding these. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. 16 does not equal 4. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. 16 does not equal 1. I've got a 4 plus 1 plus 1. So that's going to be 6. Very close. This is 5 over here. And we've got a 4 plus 4. Look at that. We've got a set of 4, a set of 4. That makes 8. So D is going to be our answer. Pretty simple this evening.